How well do you know the true gospel? Are you living out the full grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you struggling with a religious mindset? Join us for lunch. Dr. Michael Kunkwa is the presiding bishop of the Redeemed Evangelical Mission, TREM. He's a former president of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. He's an apostle to this generation, a father to many, and a pastor of many pastors across the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, Bishop Mike Okunkwa, thank you so much for stopping for lunch. My pleasure, thank you. I'm just wondering, Bishop, what's the prophetic agenda behind this year's theme for TREM, which is Year of Commanded Blessing? Well, every year when we seek the face of God, He will give us direction on what to look up to for the coming year. And uh, I know that having been in prayer, He, he wanted us to know that uh, he, it's our year of commanded blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the spirit behind it is mm -hmm. the fact that as believers, because at times we... I, I, I would say that unfortunately, probably due to wrong teachings or the traditional background where how one became a Christian, mm -hmm. we have misjudged God. People only talk about the God that is a God of vengeance, a God that is willing to judge you, waiting for you for your next mistake and kill you, or, you know, put you under pressure. But studying the scriptures, you will find out that the, 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 the real thing that makes God God mm -hmm. had not been emphasized. The power behind God is, 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 is ability to unconditionally love man. Mm -hmm. That is who God is. God is love. Who is not waiting for your next mistake? In fact, he unconditionally loves every human being but when you have not come to realize and appreciate this aspect and this nature of his you are frightened about him you are not even secured even though you are worshiping him you, your your relationship with him is not secured you are thinking well if i miss it i'm not sure how he's going to deal with me but the truth is the scripture says why we were yet sinners Christ died for us. And so the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ has automatically positions everyone who accepts Christ as the Lord and Savior to be blessed. It's an automatic position. The scripture says in Colossians 1 to itself, Christ in you, the hope, joyful, confident expectation of glory. In other words, you should not expect evil. It is not your portion. So God wants uh, the, the people out there to begin to see him from the standpoint of his goodness. Mm -hmm. He's a good God, mm -hmm. and uh, he wants to, to always do good to us. If we have that mentality, you will wake up every morning expecting only good to knock at your doors, not evil. Mm -hmm. So that's I believe what God is trying to make us understand that every day, every day of this year, we should ex expect his blessing Amen. to knock at our doors. And he's, he's the one, he's the God of blessing. He's the one that will make it happen. And actually, he does say in his word that daily he loads us with... Loads us with benefits and that the earth is full of his goodness. Amen. So we must expect our daily load. Of, 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 of his of benefits and daily load of, of his goodness. And, and Psalm 103, verse 1, is, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless, bless his soul, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So many times people forget that aspect, and uh, you wake up without hope. I don't know what today will bring. No, I know. Because God is a good God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. So no matter what our situations are telling us, no matter what we see around us. That's right. 
expect good and it will happen. Do you agree that sometimes it's not that easy to believe against all odds? Well, that's why you stay in the word. I agree. That's why the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The more of the, you stay in the word of God, the easier it becomes. It's a practice. Stay in the word of God because the Bible says words, words are spirit and they are life. The more you stay in the word of God, the more it becomes easier. You so say your faith has to be exercised. As often as you exercise your faith, you will discover it to be easier now to, to exercise it. I know it's not very easy. And it's so easy to, to fix your mind on the evil. But when you make up your mind to renew your mind through the word, you discover that it's easy. Amen. So the word makes it easy. Yeah. Cheer up, the word works. <laughs> Absolutely. I would say that we are in the last days today. And believers should not be surprised. I mean, it's the world that should be shocked. We should not be shocked because the scripture already tells us that God that we serve is not surprised. Mm -hmm. You are not backing him against the world. Mm -hmm. He is still the almighty God. And the church is not going to leave this planet in, an, an, in a fire brigade approach. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ will be taken out of this place in a blaze of glory. We are not losing this war. The glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the water covers the sea. Mm -hmm. I know the God we serve in a day, he can turn things around. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, so that's, we must have that confidence. We must have that uh, uh, belief and not have any doubt that we are not involved in a a war that we will lose. Mm -hmm. Already the war is fixed. It's a predetermined fight. Now thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. Mm -hmm. So we are already more than conquerors. Amen. So the believer must live his life with an assurance. Our journey of faith is not a journey of supposition. It's not a journey of oh, are we sure we will make it or not. No, no, no. The scripture says these things are written that we may know mm -hmm. and we, that we have eternal life and that he that has him has life and this life is in his son. In other words, once we have Christ in our life, we are already on our way up. It can never be worse for the believer. It can never be worse. It's, it's already good. <laughs> Actually, that scripture says the steps of the righteous shines well, brighter and brighter onto the perfect, on the perfect day. day. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we know that God did not spare his only begotten son. He gave him up for us. For us. While we are yet sinners. Mm -hmm. Romans 8.32 now says, If he spared not his only son and gave him to us, how can he not with him now freely give us all things? So the, assur the assurance the believer need needs to have to 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 believe the love of God, unconditionally, irrevocable, irreversible, ironclad, blood-bought love of God for him is to look at the cross. The cross is the evidence that God loves you unconditionally. He loves you irreversibly. He cannot change. Even your mistakes cannot change his love. <laughs> Are you following? Yeah. Your mess cannot change his love. That's what, you see, that's, that is the gospel. That is the gospel. I, I, the more I studied the love of God, the more I found out that preachers have not really preached the gospel. They are preaching, but not the gospel. The gospel is God's unconditional love. Irreversible, irrevocable, in spite of our mess. He loves us. That is what makes it too good to be true. That God will look at a sinner and says, to him, I love you. It can only be God. It's a mystery. Salvation is a mystery. You see, all we need to do is receive it and accept it. I mean, technically, for God so loved the world. He didn't say so loved the Christians. The world. And Titus 2.11 said the, 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 the grace of God that bringeth salvation, salvation has appeared to all men. All. So no one has excuse. 
The only thing one needs to do is to accept this grace that has appeared to you. The only thing that will send you to hell is not because God sent you. It's because you rejected the grace he gave you. He gave you the grace and said, take it. Wow. I'm just wondering, is there a risk that some people might not take grace for granted? Listen, that is the challenge a lot of people have. They say, when you speak like this, you are not telling people, do anything and God will forgive you. Contrary to that, it's not true. Contrary to that belief, I, have, I studied this scripture from Genesis to Revelation, and I found out that everyone who had enjoyed the grace of God went bananas for God. Amen. Look at Rahab, the professional prostitute. When the spies came to stay in her house, she's, that was grace visiting her. Mm -hmm. She defied the king's order, hazarded her life because of the fact that grace came to her house. Mm -hmm. Look at Ruth. Ruth found grace, said, where you go, I will go. go. So it's not, in other words, it's not about, about husband. It's about the God that I found. Amen. And I'm going with him anywhere. And today, both Ruth and Rahab are in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Flip to Luke 19. You see Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus was a short man. Ran to the sea coma three. Remember, man has seen and fallen short of the glory of God. That tree represents the cross. He climbed on top of the cross. The cross lifted him. Jesus came, stood and called him, I'm going to be in your house. Mm -hmm. Never mentioned his, his uh, bribery. Never mentioned his extortion. Because gr grace does not deal with your mess. It deals with your strength. It tells you what God has made available to you. That's why it's grace. Jesus never asked him to make restitution. He said, because I found grace, half of my goods I will sell and give to the poor. If I've taken anything from any man by falsehood, I will restore them. He made restitution. His lifestyle changed without any pressure. Amen. That's what grace does. Peter, grace reached out to him when he was fishing. He was not a believer. He was fishing, toiled all night, caught nothing. And Jesus now said, look, can I borrow your boat? He gave it. At the end, cast your net on the deep for a drought he caught. Then, it was then it dawned on him that the person dealing with me is not just ordinary. You know what he said? Go away from me. I'm a sinful man. And all that. Jesus said, no, you have had an encounter with me. From today, I will make you a fisher of men. From then, Peter began to follow Jesus. So everyone who had enjoyed grace always went extra mile for God. True are the scriptures. Now, the Bible says the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us. Grace teaches you to live life for God. So what God does is he draws you with grace. Eh? out of the love, he draws you nearer to him, then gives you the power to live for him. Bishop, thank you so much for chatting with us today. And thank you for your fellowship today. I hope you've been blessed. If you're happy to let us know your experience of grace, that would be awesome. We're gonna pick up this subject of commanded blessing with one of the resident pastors of Trent in Houston. God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow. See, see the world, follow the light.